Good morning, everybody. So uh, we're going to check on this uh, 2.7 ounce grow bin. Uh, I took a peek at it earlier, so we're going to address an issue. It uh, seems to be uh, a lot of people panic over. So you go and open up your bin and... Oh no, it's covered with mold. What do I do? Let me show you how to uh, remedy this uh, panicus situation. -ous. So uh, what you do is you take it and do it like this right here. And you feed them that. They'll love it. They'll eat it. And look at there. My bin don't have any more mold. Crisis overted. So there we go. That's how you do with mold. And, and it's just that simple. That's what they're eating. Down there inside the dirt, when you put the food in there, the food starts to rot. It starts to break down. It starts to get funky, moldy, grungy, black, nasty. That's perfect for them. That's what they're waiting on. So uh, don't panic. You open it up. It's got mold on it. That's called free food. So uh, speaking of food, that's what we're going to do. We're going to feed some beans. So uh, let's take a look in here and see what we got. So everybody doing. A little bit of food left there. That corn is real. See, that's the skins. That's what that is. That's the skins off the corn. And uh, when you first open up your bin sometimes, the worms will literally push up to the top. Stuff they don't want or stuff they're done with or whatever. They'll, they'll literally evict it out of the bin on their own. They'll, they'll run it up to the top and leave it for you. It's like a little message, you know, hey, daddy. We're, we're done with this, or we wasn't happy with that. So, uh, yeah, a little bit of food left, not much. So let's feed the babies. So, uh, I'm sitting over here now, getting uh, some more bedding ready. Doing a little sifting, getting a little bit ready for them. I done mixed them up some food. Like I said in a previous video, I've started to uh, pre-blend my food and let it sit in a bucket over here and break down. It's more than leaving them in the bags laying out before I blend them and all that. That's going to get that mold. That's going to get that funkiness going. And that's what they're hunting. So um, the food will be ready faster for them to, to eat and break down and everything. So I'm just trying to help them out a little bit. There we go. All of them happy, healthy, fat worms. Okay. They're doing all right. Yeah. If you see me, I pick them up, I throw them in here like that. I'm sitting them over top of the food. They'll go down. Kind of get everybody together, anybody straggling along the top. Like I said, you don't see me many times. Go in and work the sides. I fluffed a bin earlier tonight on the uh, cardboard um, natural bedding um, comparison. I went around and fluffed it. It needed fluffing. Um, but I, I don't do that. That's not standard procedure. Uh, we did that to get a bird's eye view on the inside the bin to see. How everybody was doing. Get a better idea how the bin's running. But I can look at these and tell from the sides. I got castings up and down where they come through and they come down and come around. And they leave them castings on the sides. That's a positive sign that you got them doing what they need to do. They got to eat, they got to poop, and they got to make us some babies. Right there, there's a cocoon. There's a dark maroon cocoon. They're in here. So, yeah. That's what we're doing. Awesome job. But yeah. It's that simple. Like I said, don't panic. Don't ever panic. That's uh, how it works. And I mean, I've got some coffee grounds laying down here in a plastic bag. They were wet. When I got them, I didn't dry them out. I didn't do anything. I twisted the bag up, keep my dog out of them. And uh, 
because for some reason, <clears throat> one of them, he, he loves public grounds. But, uh, yeah, don't don't panic. Don't do anything like that. It's okay. Um, let, it, let it mold. I opened it up the other day, and it was all moldy and stuff. When I went to go put it in the bin, I was like, oh, yeah. I was tickled to death. A little bit of food on the top here. Not much. Might be some in here. Let's go. Let's go with it. What do you think? Let's go with it. Roll it back. See what we got. Yeah, it's a little bit of food there. Nothing close to what we fed them. Some worms showing up. Some pot worms. Starting to pop up here and there. It's okay. Well, they, uh, they help out too. Nothing major. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm working my last bit of uh, compost and leaf mulch I got. So it won't be long. I'm going to have to head out into the woods and grab them some more. But uh, we can do that. It ain't it ain't off the road or nothing. It's right next to the driveway of the trailer park. So I can back up my truck. Shovel up a fair amount. Throw it in the back of the truck and bring it home. There we go. That's more like it. I'm going to take some of this stuff and throw it back in there with it. Oh, yeah. Looking good. Looking good. Everybody's fat and happy. And that's what we want. There you go. And that's about how long it takes. It actually takes less time because I'm talking to y'all. But uh, I can get in here and sling these things and jam, jam, jam like that. <coughs> I can feed 10, 15 beans in a matter of minutes. It's real simple. Just stack it. And as I stack it, I've got, they're, they're four to a stack. So as I stack them, I move them down the table. And those are processed. And then I know which ones have been fed and which ones haven't been fed. And so it's an easy way to keep up with them. And I just slide them in. Uh-oh. A little bit of food there. See, they're all on the outside out here, you see. That's where all the, all the good stuff goes on. They get out there and hang out. Like I said, that's usually where they hang out. They hang out on the sides, and then they come in from the side and work the food. And so, um, yeah, yeah, they're out. I call that out. So, yeah. I mean, you can't ask for nothing better than that right there. That's that's what you're after. You see, you see right there, right? A little cocoon. Oh yeah. That's what we're trying for, at least. So, yeah. Good deal. Um, put a little bit of this in here. Like that right there. And we'll give them a little bit of this right here. This is corn and I don't even know. Well, actually, it just come out of the bucket, so it's a whole lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's a whole lot of stuff. I went through about 15 cans of uh, out-of-date food. 2018 food, I believe is what it was. Um, yeah, so that'll work out good. I had somebody cleaning out their uh, pantry, and uh, it had gotten out-of-date food in it, and we uh, took it 
took it off their hands. Helps out tremendously on the feeding. And if you uh if you're running a bin and, and I, I see people talk about you know they they need another bin or they got to do it different because they've got too much food and the worms aren't working the food so they don't know what to do they're gonna order some more worms I'll give you an option you can do is is you can easily just take it whatever you got it's either chunky big chunks little chunks blended whatever take it and get it down as compacted as you can and sling it up in the freezer and just freeze it and keep and as you need it, pull it out, throw it down, let it start thawing out and getting ready. And then you can feed it to them like that. Or you can go on and blend it and or not blend it, whatever. Throw it in a be you know, throw it in a bucket, set it right inside the room, let it start breaking down. It'll be even faster food um, by letting it start to break down. The reason it takes so long for them to eat it is because it's not already broke down when you put it in there. Everybody thinks it's like feeding a feeding a cat. You pour the food in the bowl and the cat comes over and eats it. That's not exactly what happens here. You put the food in there, but until the food gets right, the worms aren't going to touch it. So you may put a whole half a pound of food right here. They may not touch it for four days before it gets right. You see, they may sit out here and just keep doing what they're doing and, and munching on the bedding. And then once the food gets right, they'll ease in and, and they'll start eating it. So if you want your food to go faster then let it break down a little bit more before you add it, you see. There's just another cocoon. That's always a sign of a healthy being making babies. So that's what we're after. So, but yeah, like I said, that may be a problem, you know, a problem fixer to somebody's um, uh, distribution of their scraps. Um, you know, some, some families make more scraps than they got worms, but if you feed it to them and they eat it faster, then you can get rid of it faster. And the fastest way to feed it to them, I believe in, is blended and parsley already jumped off with breaking down with microbes and bacteria already in it. That helps them get to it faster. And so that may be a, an option for somebody if they're they're running low on worms. I hear them, oh, I got to get some more worms. Well, maybe you just need to do your food different until you can let the worms you've got multiply and make you some more worms. I haven't ordered worms in almost four and a half years now. Um, and we killed off two colonies. But when there was somebody on a page on Facebook um, yesterday, I think it was, talking about their worms had disappeared, got gone or whatever because it was cold and they didn't feed their bin. The bin was outside or something. And they were like, I might get some more worms. I was like, well, as cold as it's been, your cocoons probably hadn't hatched. Um, more than likely, if you let your cocoons warm up, you'll probably have plenty of worms. You can use those worms to replace the worms you lost. So um, this bin is doing really good now that I'm actually sitting here. I don't even have my glasses on. And I mean, I'm like cocoon, 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 cocoon. Oh, yeah, I'm liking this one. This is excellent. Um, I don't know. I think this one's got the... No, I thought it had the amount of worms in it on there. But uh, it's only a handful in each bin. That's all I really did when I reset these. These are the January bins. And uh, all I did was just grab a handful, sling them in. I, I would take one bin, split it out into the little dish here that was basically that. And it would be full. And I would literally get half of it out. Shuck it in a bin. I took the other half and either made another bin with it. And once I got all my bins built, I took the other half that was left over and we slung it in the bathtub. And that's why the bathtub is, <laughs> is getting ridiculously full. So that's that's excellent. I mean, I'm taking a death about it. So, uh, yeah. Let me see here. We got, uh, got a little bit more to do here. Um, I believe sifter out of the way. This is the uh, 224 grow bin that we set up. And we pulled uh, hatchlings out of a, another uh, castings bin. A uh, finished casting. It only had the cocoons. I see people talking about sifting and, and that. And that's awesome. People love to sift and I'm all for it. I've got a sifter but I only use the sifter for my bedding. Um, I don't sift. Uh, I, what most I'll do is do the light method, and it, it just depends on how much time you got and whatever. Um, I go through and just drag off the top like this, and then I'll throw that into a bucket. I'll keep it. I'll keep it around for 
a month or two, and I'll let the cocoons inside that hatch, and I'll pull the hatchlings out, and I'll reset bins with it. I don't sift. The casting, once they, I get all the babies out, that casting can go into another bucket or a bigger bin, and I keep it for my garden. So, yeah, that's that's how I, I sift. I don't. So, yeah, right down with this. A little bit left right there. A little wet in here. A little wet. But they like it wet. That's the thing. Wet is better than dry. So, the cocoons like it. They like it. They, they made in it a lot better. It just, it, it helps the whole environment. I see some. I see some little ones in here. Some littler than we put in here. <laughs> so that's good too. Oh yeah, when you wind up with five or six generations that you can look at and tell that that's a baby, you know, a fresh hatchling, and then you pull out one that's, you know, just a, a I don't know, a couple of weeks older, they get bigger and bigger and bigger, and they still don't have a clotellum on them, so you know they're not adults. Um, that's awesome. I, I love it when it happens, because you wind up with four or five different stages uh, from hatchling to... Uh, sub-adult and so that's always a good sign that, that that you're getting stages of of hatchlings out of the cocoons every 21 days and so um that's how i run it i don't i don't hunt up my cocoons i let them stay where they're at and then i just let them hatch out and i get the worms once i can pick them up and seal them so a little bit down the middle there It's hard, it's hard to not overfeed them. I mean, <laughs> a lot of, you know, I'm, I'm bad about it too. I, I have to go through my bins and look at them and go, do I really want to feed them? Do they really need to eat? And so that's why I go through and look at them. And, and I, I, I do this off camera. I go through and look, look at the bins and find the ones that need to be fed. And those are the ones I snatch out, stack, stack up and go, hey, let's make a feeding video. So, but, um. I don't like to overfeed. Like I said, they've uh, they've got plenty to eat, and so uh, it's always a good thing. And uh, this bin's a little wet. It's definitely that. So, what do you do with a wet bin? Everybody say, add bedding. That's all you gotta do. Add some bedding. I won't turn these bins out probably for another, I don't know, four or five weeks probably anyway. So, you know, it's okay. I don't like adding bedding to uh, bins I'm fixing to turn out because, you know, they're not going to eat it. It's not going to get broke down, anything like that. And uh, it just adds bedding to castings and that's not what I want. I want just casting. So, um, I don't like adding to one I'm fixing to do. If it gets wet, I'll try to leave the lid off of it for a little while or something like that. There we go. See, like I said before, and I said time and time again, bedding's your friend. It's, uh, It'll fix a lot of your problems. A lot of your problems. See there? There we go. That fast food, it's wet when you put it in. and If you just put a handful of... I, I was putting a quart in, and then I started cutting back because I was trying to conserve my, my bedding, and look what happened. So, just a little bit. Like that. <laughs> Ta-da. Crisis overted again. No time to panic. So, uh, let me go with that. What we got? Only one more. And that's the 224 bin. It's February 24th, so that man's uh, it's a pretty new bin. You don't want to get it all whacked out in the very beginning. So here's the March the 7th bin that we set. We fed it. I think. So 
last week. Have to look and see on that one. Let's see what they've done for us. A little bit left. Not much. That's uh, that's working good there. I mean, that's uh, definitely some good happy worms in here. Oh yeah, definitely. This was our new bin. This is with the instructional how to make a bin bin video <laughs> so uh yeah it's a hundred i think about around about a hundred worms in here so um, yeah I'm good with it a little bit of food not much left they're all mad at me now <laughs> it's okay they'll get over it so yeah that's awesome so Beating on the house. Let's get them a little scotch more. That's unsifted, if you can tell. You can see the difference between what we put in earlier and what you're putting in now. It's just got more leaves in it. It's got couple of shells in it and stuff like that but it's okay it's all right it'll break down it'll break down there we go with that and then a little magic mix here Yeah. Well, so I don't like to throw the worms right into the food. I try to put a little, little bit of bedding over top of it. I give them the option to go into it when they want to. So I just, you know, because I know for a fact this stuff isn't broke down like. The next, like next week, when I use the same stuff out the same bucket, it's gonna be broke down a whole lot better. See that fast moving purple sucker right there? Mm-hmm. Compared to old pink, yellow tail, salmon color. See, those are two different worms. Everybody asks what kind of worms they are. They're different. Um, I know they were a mixed breed when I got them. Um, you know, that's what happens. Um, there's very few sellers that sell 100%. Um, red wigglers. There's a couple people that are working on trying to get that straightened out. And, um, I think, uh, the lady at, uh, garden, warm and garden lady. I think uh, she's working on doing the uh, 100%. She's she's slowly getting the uh, the breed right and and rooting out all the uh, blue worms. So um, and getting 100% reds for people. Um, she's a real good good lady. She's got a good channel. You can go check her out. Um, she sells. I don't know how many she sells. Um, she's got a ton, breeding a ton, so, uh, go check her out, she's on, uh, on here, on YouTube, it's the, uh, gardening, uh, the worm, the worm and garden lady, so, there we go, that's that one too, so that gets, uh, that gets everybody breakfast this morning, everybody's fed, fat and happy, 
And like I said, that's the new bin that we just made on the how to make a bin. So you see how easy it is to take care of a bin that you just made for five bucks. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. Pretty simple. But uh, like I said, um, just go check out go check out a couple other channels and, and see how they do it. Um, pull the pieces that you like away from everybody and then do your own thing. Because you're the one doing it, you, you know, you, you're making it, make it enjoyable for you and 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 put your spin on it. So that way it's it's you, and um, and just just have fun with it. No stress, don't panic. Uh, there's nothing to stress or panic about. Uh, escapees, yeah, I got a couple of escapees around here every now and then. I don't have any mass exodus. I just got some nosy little worms that like to go out in the middle of the night and uh, check things out and be nosy. And they get they get in a bad situation when they wind up outside of the bin, so uh, they pay the price. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes I come in and I'm like, "Hey, what are you doing?" And I shuck them back in the bin. Uh, I don't leave I don't leave a light on. Um, I, I I just don't. Uh, this room stays dark until the sun comes up. The sun comes in through the through the window through the blinds, and uh, you know I don't I don't keep a light on for them. I shut this room down when I leave, close the door, and I don't come back in for a couple of days and let them be. I've never came in and found more than, I don't know, one or two worms here or there. Most of the time I can find them on the bin lids. They'll get off of one bin and go down and get on a lid like this bin, and I'll pick them up and shuck them in the bin. But like, no, 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 you don't need to go anywhere. So uh, anyway, um, I appreciate it. I appreciate y'all tuning in. Uh, hey, and oh, by the way, check us out. We made 100 subscribers earlier this morning. So, uh, big shout out to AJ's Green Topics. He uh, he blasted my uh, channel on his, and I really appreciate that. That takes a lot of respect of uh, giving that man because he doesn't have to uh, doesn't have to push anybody's anything. Um, he could, you know, he could just be about him, worried about his subscribers and worried about his views and his likes and his comments. But he takes the time out to throw some other channels out and give them some, you know, give them some props and give them some recognition and it really helped. And so, uh, AJ, man, I appreciate it, brother, man. That was, uh, that was really cool. And, um, like I said, go check out some other channels. I got a, um, couple channels I blasted out the, what, about four or five videos ago. Uh, give a shout out to Nana's Worms. Um, um, Mimi's Worms is also a good channel. Um, the, um, Garden and Worm, or the Worm and Garden Lady, and uh, uh, Toga's Kitchen Playground, um, Rubber Compost Learn by Doing, um, Gardening with Bar Chucking, uh, there's a whole bunch of others. So, like I said, it's a big community. We're all together. We're in this together. So, you know, we, we all try to help each other out. And like I said, go around and look at what everybody's doing. And then, like I said, pull those pieces in that you like and kind of do your own thing. And enjoy it. Have fun. Do not stress. Anyway, y'all have a good morning. I really appreciate y'all coming and checking it out. Um, I'm really stoked, 100 subscribers, and that's awesome. We've got over like 12,000 views, or almost 13,000 views, and uh, that's really cool. So I'm help I hope I'm helping some people. You know, um, you know, I, I'm hoping you're taking something from this and it's helping you fix some of your problems or making you feel at ease a little bit better about doing the worm uh, farming, composting, vermicompost. So, uh, anyway, like I said, um, thank you, thank you. Um, don't forget, subscribe, hit the like button, give me a comment, throw a thumbs up, do all the good stuff, jingle ling a lang lang Hey, good morning. I hope you have a great week. Thank you very much.